Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to start with a, a piece uh, from a poem by W.H. Uh, Auden. Um, um, Auden is, um, is a poet, um, uh, not necessarily the, the greatest poet in the English language in the 20th century, um, uh, but the best uh, political poet. Um, uh, he's the only person I know uh, who has written a poem on diplomacy, uh, actually a very good poem on diplomacy, one of the best explanations of diplomacy in a very short period. But the piece of Auden that I'm now going to, to read, um, uh, and I hope maybe it'll even appear on some screens, um, uh, uh, goes as follows. It's not about diplomacy. This is Auden speaking. All I have is a voice to undo the folded lie, the romantic lie in the brain of the sensual man in the street, or the lie of authority whose buildings grope the sky. There is no such thing as the state, and no one exists alone. Hunger allows no choice to the citizen or to the police. We must love one another or die. So he says, there is no such thing as the state. But the, poet, the title of the poem um, is actually the first, uh, September the 1st, 1939. Um, and Auden is in New York, um, and he's arrived in New York uh, precisely because of what is going on in Europe. So he knows very well that there is such a thing as the state, uh, which is the dominant factor in 1939. Um, uh, and in the poem also, he says, after all, in this little bit that I've read, he says, um, uh, hunger allows no choice to the citizen and the police. Well, you could say the citizen and the police, this represents the two sides of the state. It, on the one hand, creates citizens, and on the other hand, it creates police. It's almost half, it's, it's a quick summary of the state, uh, what the state is and what it does. So his... Um, uh, statement, there is no such thing as the state. I guess that this is a kind of, this is a kind of wish. Um, uh, no one exists alone. We must love one another or die. Uh, this is a dream. Uh, it's the dream of um, a society uh, without a state. Um, uh, but he also knows perfectly well that that's not going to happen. Um, the um, the most powerful uh, uh, voice contradicting uh, that theory uh, is the voice of Thomas Hobbes. Um, uh, um, well, i do not not sure I find the exact words. Um, uh, who says effectively, um, without a power to keep uh, people in awe, um, Every man will be the enemy of every man. Um, in such a condition, there is no place for industry because the fruit thereof is uncertain and consequently no culture of the earth, no navigation, no commodities that may be imported by sea, no commodious buildings, no commerce, and so on. All the good things of society uh, in the end depend on there being some kind of order and the order is established by the state. Um, uh, I, I came across this, um, this, the bit of the Auden poem, which I sort of knew already, but I came across it again in a footnote of an article by David Runciman um, in which he is saying how extremely difficult it is to say exactly what the state is. The state is not the constitution. Um, it's not the people. It's not the territory. Um, uh, you could say it's an organization, but what does that tell you? Um, uh, we know what its function is. Its function, um, uh, or for example, if you want to say, you could say the same thing about a company. It's not the building, it's not the board of directors. But you would answer the question, what is the company? The company is an organization established under law. Um, but you can't say that of the state. 
because the state is not an organization established under any law. It's established itself, somehow. The only thing you can say is, is what its, its function is, and its function is to provide uh, authority. Uh, that is to say, as Thomas Hobbes says, the common power to keep men in awe. Uh, that's the function, and it's a very important one. Um, uh, Runciman, in um, discussing the, um, the in, in discussing the difficulty of pinning the state down, um, uh, compares it to money. Um, uh, another thing which is essential uh, in our everyday lives. Uh, essential to the running of the economy, um, but quite difficult to say exactly what it is. And to illustrate this, I've, I brought with me a, an English five-pound note. Um, uh, this is issued by the Bank of England. It says Bank of England. And then it says, if you've got good eyesight, you'll see it says on the five-pound note, I promise to pay the bearer the sum of five pounds and is signed by the chief cashier of the Bank of England. Um, uh, so there you have a guarantee that if you take this note uh, to the Bank of England, uh, you can give it to the chief cashier um, and say, please give me five pounds. Um, and he will look at it carefully uh, and then give it back to you. So exactly what has happened in this transaction and the answer is nothing at all. Um, uh, and so uh, what is this money if it tells you that it's worth five pounds and you can, but actually you can then, uh, and the Bank of England will give you five pounds for it and it does, but then the point is that you can go out in the street and buy something with it. Um, uh, and the point is that it is universally accepted. So. What I've asked myself is maybe if one wants to explain the state, and indeed money as well, maybe there is a category of things in the world um, which exist uh, only because people believe in them. Um, I'm a bit tempted to say that that's also like, uh, that that's also like fairies. Um, but they exist but only in the minds of people, um, only if people believe in them. Um, uh, and, yet, uh, and yet that's a very powerful thing. Um, uh, the point of the money is that it has value and can be used. The point of the state uh, is that it tells people what to do and they do it. Um, I have one perhaps slightly strange illustration of this. And this is in France in 1944. Um, uh, the, uh, the government of France is still the Vichy government. Um, it looks a bit shaky in 1944, but it's still there. However, then the Normandy landings take place. And um, uh, a few days after, after some very, uh, some very bloody fighting, a few days after that, um, uh, the British um, uh, give uh, uh, General de Gaulle a ride in one of their boats. Um, and he arrives in Normandy, um, and he goes to the town of, of Bayer in Normandy, um, which at the time has a government which is... Um, uh, which is at least fairly uh, uh, friendly towards Vichy. Um, and de Gaulle makes a speech in the marketplace. Um, uh, there are different accounts of the speech. In de Gaulle's memoirs, he says that this was a fantastic success. Other people say that there was a certain puzzlement, and they wondered who this man was who was making the speech. Um, uh, but what matters is at the end of the speech, uh, he leaves... Um, and he leaves behind Monsieur Coulet, who he appoints as his commissioner in Normandy. Um, and thereafter, um, the Allied forces, when they want to discuss something that they're doing, they want the civilian population to do, they talk to Monsieur Coulet. 
um, uh, and uh, the police uh, decide that they're also going to in take instruction from Mr. Coulet. And suddenly, so what do you call this event? Um, uh, well, you could call it a coup d'etat, um, or at least the beginning of a coup d'etat. Um, uh, one of the victims of the coup d'etat, as it happens, is Franklin Roosevelt, uh, because he has been opposing de Gaulle all his life. Um, uh, but after this event, gradually it becomes clear uh, that um, uh, de Gaulle is the person who is now able to say, uh, l'état c'est moi. Um, uh, there have been, uh, over time, um, uh, many different um, forms of the state um, uh, and different reasons for legitimacy, um, uh, inheritance from the family, um, uh, popular enthusiasm, um, uh, and uh, in the area of Europe, um, uh, in particular, uh, security, uh, ability to provide protection from the population, because Europe was a place of, is a place of many states where um, geography uh, allows the creation of small local states uh, and was more or less in a state of continuous war ever since the states appeared. Um, uh, and out of that, you have uh, a whole variety of, of different sorts of states and different kinds of legitimacy. Um, and then they go abroad and they create empires. Um, uh, but, the, um, uh, uh, but the contest, but the main contests are still uh, contests between, between states. Um, uh, the, uh, but, but I think in different parts of the world you find that there are uh, many different traditions. A friend of mine who is an expert in Africa says there's no way in which you can describe the state in Africa as being like the state in Europe. Um, uh, my background is in the, is in the Far East um, and there also I think the state is not exactly what we think of as the state. Um, it always struck me, for example, that um, Japan uh, was a place with a rather weak state, uh, but a rather strong society. Um, uh, no one in Japan has um, uh, put down a law uh, that says that people should wear masks. Um, actually, they wear them all the time. Even before COVID, they used to, you put on a mask in Japan if you have a cold. Uh, you do that out of consideration for other people in the society. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a society which is so strong um, that uh, you ask people um, who's the prime minister, um, and after they think a little bit, they may remember, uh, but they may not. Um, it's a society which it seemed to me always gets on pretty well without the state. Um, so maybe there are possibilities of having um, uh, strong countries uh, uh, without a state. Um, uh, uh, the, um, if we think of the state and we think of war, or we think of the clashes between states, um, uh, it seems to me that the, um, uh, the much worse clash, the worst of the clashes that I can uh, that I remember historically. Well, the wars between states are terrible and the bloodshed is fantastic and the destruction is like nothing on earth. Um, uh, on the other hand, um, if you think of the encounter between um, uh, the state and the non-state, um, then, uh, uh, then maybe that's much worse. And I think of the... Um, uh, I think in particular um, of the encounters between the, um, the new liberal state um, uh, in, the, in the United States of America, um, uh, the state that was just uh, created, uh, very much a liberal state, 
the um, uh, uh, the the first governors in America, the first um, governments in America, uh, were very much aware that the state belonged to the people um, and that they must follow what the people wanted and that there was no way of opposing the people. Um, and uh, uh, what the people wanted um, uh, was they wanted land. Um, and there was lots of land out there, uh, very fertile land. And um, uh, uh, this was land which was occupied uh, by the various Indian nations. Um, but there you had, if you want an example of a society without a state, uh, this was one. Because the Indian nations um, did not have the um, uh, did not have the same structure, even the same structure of thought, as um, uh, uh, as the um, uh, as the as the Europeans. Um, uh, the Indian nations um, uh, had, for example, uh, no concept of property, in particular, no concept of owning land. Um, uh, uh, and they had no power to hold them in awe. And all of the things that um, Thomas Hobbes uh, describes when he talks about, um, uh, uh, he says there is no place for industry because the fruit thereof is uncertain. Consequently, no culture of the earth, no navigation, no use of commodities imported by sea, no commodious buildings, no instruments of moving or removing, uh, such things as require much force. Those things you could say, those were all true um, of the Indian nations. Um, and the contest between um, the Indian nations and not exactly uh, the American state, because much of the time it was not the state, but it was simply the American settlers, but they were backed by the state. This was perhaps the most one-sided contest uh, that you could imagine in the world. Uh, the state, even though it was a new state, um, against, against the non-state. Um, and the result was, in many cases, more or less the disappearance uh, of, the, of the Indian nations. Um, uh, a, great, um, uh, a great cultural loss, one might say, um, particularly, uh, it seems to me, in these days of... Uh, environmental crisis, we could probably do with their advice. So, um, so uh, it's uh, undoubtedly um, the state is a monster. Um, uh, whether it's a cold monster or not um, is another matter. Um, uh, in this particular case, it was a monster which was uh, highly responsive um, to its public. Uh, it knew what the public wanted uh, and it gave and it gave them its backing. Uh, in other cases, um, what is monstrous about the state is that it represents a um, uh, it represents a concentration of power um, that is um, uh, that is formidable. Um, but it's on the basis of that power that enables you to have property. Uh, it creates. Uh, the state is about power, but it's also about order. Um, uh, and it's order that allows people to live predictable lives, allows them to make investments, uh, allows them to make money, allows them to build a future, um, uh, enables um, all of the things that count as uh, riches, all of the things that are left behind, uh, all of the things that, uh, that Thomas Hobbes built, the uh, lists. Um, uh, buildings, uh, worth, uh, uh, wealth, uh, commerce, riches, um, all of those things uh, are also the product of the state uh, as well as destruction. But above all, I would say, actually it's order. And we think of, when we think of the state, we think of, uh, we think of force, uh, we think of people putting people in prison. Um, but the other way you can think of the state um, is you think of it as the um, body which decrees um, in Britain uh, that you should drive on the left uh, and in more or less the rest of the world uh, that you should drive on the right. Um, and it's that order uh, that allows people to, uh, 
uh, live predictable lives when you know which side of the road you're on uh, and uh, not kill each other, at least by accident, though they do quite a lot of killing by pur on purpose. Um, uh, so I don't know that I... Um, uh, uh, David Runciman says of his question, you may not be able to say very clearly exactly what the state is, um, though you could give these different definitions, having the monopoly on force and so on. That says what it does, um, uh, but it certainly, like money, um, fills an indispensable function, without which all kinds of other things would not exist at all. So that's it. <laughs>